Crollo Lucilfer has a f ugly default outfit. <laughs> Literally, why is it so ugly? And who gave him that much forehead? <laughs> to be fair, it is not that bad in the manga, but like as soon, as soon as you take away those ink lines, <laughs> big oof. <laughs> I guess it's really not all bad. Like sometimes he wears other stuff. Sometimes he wears this cheap suit. But for us cosplayers, um, that is all bad because those outfit choices are just not fair. Crollo Lucilfer is an amazing villain and we as cosplayers deserve to wear amazing flippin' outfits of him. So when I stumbled across this outfit, <laughs> It's in like three panels or something in this like piece of the manga that's never been animated. Like no spoilers, but if you know, you know, I was thrilled. I knew that I could finally cosplay Crollo without having to wear that f***ing ugly default outfit. <laughs> and I knew that I could interpret it in any way that I wanted. So I chose to be really bespoke, almost high fashion. Crollo, but make him couture. I have worked on this design for over two years. Except I absolutely f have not. <laughs> Three months of real consistent work is my max, people. <laughs> I worked on it for like a couple hours here and there back when I started it in 2020. And it had been ages since I last touched it when I found myself working on this cosplay in early January for a con the next week. I have learned literally nothing from my past mistakes. <laughs> So the goal for today is actually to start off by finishing my Crollo cut work, which I've actually been working on a bunch throughout the day. Um, last I checked in on my little Twitter whip thread, um, it was just this part and this part that were done, none of, none of this. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been working on that throughout the day. Essentially, anytime I get like 15 minutes, I'll come on and I'll just like throw a couple, couple pieces on. Um, but cut work is pretty cool. Um, cut work is essentially, um, it's a type of gold work that you do where you take this this cool bullion wire which is is what it sounds like it's it's wire um so it's this really tightly coiled really skinny wire that you can it's really stretchable first of all which is just it's just brilliant but you can essentially put thread through it like a bead um and then put it on but the the way to do that is you have to cut it into all these all these little pieces i like so these little little baby pieces um and and yeah it'll it'll just kind of go on like beadwork but it will look like embroidery it'll look honestly like satin stitching it's pretty satisfying i really wanted to tell you in this check-in that i was literally just going to be working on the gold work until it was done like all the cut work all the pearl pearl everything just done prepped ready to be attached to the back of the jacket and then i would sew the like jackety cody thing tomorrow however i just I sort of had the realization a couple minutes ago that I, even though I love this cross, that <laughs> it's really important to me and like in my heart the main part of the costume, I do actually need to sew the costume before I can attach the cross to the costume. So I'm not gonna be spending the rest of the evening working on this cross. I am instead gonna work on as much as I can, probably till about midnight. And then, then I'm gonna go to bed so that I can get up nice and early, find my costume, because I'm not completely sure where all the pieces are. I worked on it so long ago. I need to find pattern pieces, find fabrics. Pfft, that's gonna be an experience. <laughs> so I intend to get up like bright and early tomorrow, find that, and then I'm gonna try and spend all day working on that. See if I can get it together in a way that I can in fact actually attach the cross to it. And then as soon as I've done that, um, the plan is to finish that tomorrow or there is gonna be problems because I am not as free as I am tomorrow after tomorrow. <laughs> then I will, then I will finish the cross, then I will attach it, then I'll do a bunch of beads around the cross because I'm ridiculous. And then hopefully it'll actually be complete. So that's the plan. That's the running plan. That's what we're gonna go for. That's the goal. We're gonna make a costume. There's a week until this con. We're gonna make a costume. Let's go. So like I said, I'm doing some cut work here. Cut work is a very small part of an overarching type of embroidery known as gold work, which is essentially embroidery, but with metal. It's not necessarily made with like real gold or even goldish colored metal, just, just metal. But the origins of the techniques kind of stem from gold, hence the name. For the record, I will be doing a whole video on different types of gold work really soon. So if you're interested in that, do stick around. Anyway, I chose to add Crollo's iconic cross to the back of this design and to make it in cutwork specifically because I thought it would add to my couture interpretation of him. 
Adding in this cross is only one step when creating an interpretation like this. I could have easily done this cross with paint or applique or just regular satin stitching, but I chose instead to create 3D goldwork pieces, which later in the video will be surrounded by beads, because it was the most accessible technique to me that would be extra enough to be considered couture. I'm really happy with this choice because I love working with metal and I love embroidery, so that's a win-win for me. <laughs> but hey, tell me, do you think it's couture enough? <sighs> yeah, I did not get up early. I had a migraine RIP. But I did find all the in-progress pieces of my costume eventually. <sighs> How do I even explain what I had? Essentially, I had the front totally done, the two like left-right back pieces done, but still needing a zipper installed in the middle. I had some of a collar cut, some lining pieces cut. I had one sleeve fully sewn and lined. And I had a big manila envelope full of my old patterns and also, amazingly, a sleeve-shaped piece of muslin all ready for patterning my second sleeve. I had a lot of work done. <laughs> oh my god, I was so proud of Pass Me when I realized, like, just how much I got done. And I had saved just enough stuff to, like, still make figuring out where I was and how I did this a mystery, but also, like, a solvable mystery. <laughs> That being said, I still had so much to do. <laughs> the goal for today was essentially to do the main sewing on this, like get the torso done, Sansa sleeves. I have actually made a lot more progress than I thought I would make when I woke up at one. Um, I essentially have everything done except for the side seams. So I got the torso shoulders together, I sewed in the collar, um, I lined up the back and I put a whole zipper in. Uh, I'm like really, I'm really thrilled with the progress that I made so far, but I do, I do have to get those side seams together and they are going to be hell because I have to line up so many little individual pieces that have probably been a little bit warped in storage and try to get them, get them together. So I'm, the thing, the thing I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to try to get, I'm going to try to get them together. It doesn't matter how many times it takes. I just need to get those together. And then if I'm lucky, if I finish this at a decent time, I'm hoping to throw some bias tape or hem tape if I have it, but I probably only have bias tape. I'm going to throw some bias tape on the hem line so that even though it's not going to be fully hemmed tonight, it'll at least like slow down the fraying process on the hem. And what else did I want to do? I think that's it. Oh, I have to put pockets into the side seams as well, which is going to also make this horrific. So there's that, but it'll be worth it. Pockets are good to have at cons. They're in the design. So I really don't want to like skimp and not have the pockets also. Yeah, pockets, it's gonna be a time. I hope things go well. We'll see how this goes. You know, you're gonna know how it goes. Yeah, look at this, look at this. It's actually looking like I'm gonna have a costume. Like, oh my God. The side seams were kind of weird to sew because I did them ass backwards. Usually you like sew the seam and then the pocket, but because I had to line up the fabric evenly around the pocket, I did the pocket first, then the seam. When I'm talking about aligning the pieces and that taking multiple tries and whatever, it's because I needed to align the textured silver and black fabric on the front perfectly with the corresponding panels on the back. I patterned them all to flow and align perfectly, so I wanted them to flow and align perfectly, goddammit! <laughs> it was really difficult to sew because, one, sewing shit like this is just difficult to actually do. Like, it's definitely advanced sewing. <laughs> but also, two, because I chose the worst fabric to do this with. <laughs> I chose this fabric because it was left over in my stash and it had a great texture. But the fabric itself is so thick, it was really hard to know what the front looked like compared to what I was sewing on the back. Not to mention the fabric had a really loose weave, making it shift around a ton. That's why you can see I've interfaced every single piece to help stabilize it. But I did manage to do it. I didn't film it, but I did get the bias tape binding on the hem, so the next day when I could work again, I started off by taking a smidge of a rest compared to the crazy side seam sewing. And yeah, I just, I hemmed the torso while farming the Moogle Tomes event you don't have. <clears throat> you don't gotta say it, buddy. The Boogle Toms event in the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> you all kind of already know how that song and dance went. Zagreus has two hands, everyone. He can hold hands with Thancred, or Than <laughs> Thancred? Oh God, oh God, he's finishing up his speech. I don't know if it's gonna happen. Does it still count as in this run if I'm still queuing for the next run when I finish this? Eventually, break ended and I had to get back to the harder stuff, like actually attaching my completed gold work to the back of the costume. 
I pretty much just pinned and basted it down. So I got everything like ironed out. I finished the hem on this, which I, I didn't really need to do, but it was also like a good activity for today. I got this on the first side. Um, so I still haven't done the other side of gold work, but I got this this on right here. Um, and I think I'm actually, because I did, I just didn't even bother with working on the other side of gold work today, even though that was my main goal for today. I think I'm actually gonna just continue with this and move my gold work goal to like, tomorrow or Monday, I don't know. Um, so, I mean, I'll figure it out as, as we go. Um, nothing's, I'm not in like a dire situation yet or anything, so like I'm, I'm not really, not really super worried about it. Maybe I should be, but I'm not, so. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just really glad that I got the torso sewn because it puts me in a really good position for the rest of the week, so. Yeah, uh, might do some beading. Yeah, probably gonna do some more of that. Hopefully I can make some good progress tonight. This is not how you do beading. <laughs> I mean, you can do it this way, like clearly I did, but also just to be clear, this is not ideal. Beading is pretty simple. Like generally you just thread the thread through the bead and sew it in and just keep doing that. But also generally you gotta like anchor the beads by going through some of them twice. I did not do that because I was like, damn, I have no time. Why would I add time to my work by doing some beads twice? <laughs> it probably wasn't the smartest idea because they are now much more likely to all come tumbling out of the costume if a single thread breaks. But in my defense, I was going for such a like encrusted beaded look for this whole couture thing. Side note, is it couture enough yet? That I figured it would be really hard for anything to even come near the thread, let alone snap it, because all the beads are so close together, like they just kind of cover up the threads. I don't know, I might regret this in the future. I wouldn't recommend you bead like this, but also no threads have snapped yet. <laughs> Hello, I'm barely squeaking into frame. <laughs> Maybe I won't do this. Okay, so. I need to recreate this sleeve, but different on this sleeve. And <laughs> that's gonna be a task because I patterned this in the entire garment like two years ago. And I'm really not sure <laughs> how I did this. But the good news is, is I have this muslin already cut and ready to be patterned. I have all these pattern pieces still, like I can see how they fit together, how I marked them, all that crap. Um, and, and I have a piece of the lining already cut and sewn, so I know how the inside of, the inside of the sleeve works. The bad news is pretty much everything else. <laughs> um, I'm really not sure how I'm gonna do this, and there's also not even a lot of reference images for this sleeve. I'm pretty sure that's why I put off this one in the first place, but so. Oh god, uh, we're gonna figure it out, I guess, right now. <laughs> I totally winged it, wung it, winged it, with the overall sleeve pattern. I used my reference images the best I could, but there just wasn't a lot, so most of it was artful line drawing. I realized that for my previous sleeve pattern, I literally just cut on the lines after marking notches all along them for like help when sewing later. I also made a giant error in my initial pattern where the panels did not align under the arm along the seam. So if you're noticing that now, like you're not crazy, I did panic about it and fix it off camera later. There were like 30 something pieces in this one sleeve. So I numbered them and took a photo of how they all looked together before cutting them out. That way I could figure out how to puzzle them all back together. If you are by any chance having a thought along the lines of, excuse me, 30 pieces? For one sleeve, 30? How many pieces made up the rest of the costume? The answer is too damn many. Alrighty, four hours of my life are now gone. I patterned the fabric, I cut the fabric. Uh, I cut it a second time out of interfacing. I ironed the interfacing to the back. It was terrible. I, oh my God, it was terrible. Four hours are gone. I don't know why I do this to myself voluntarily. Um, but yeah, it's now, it's now almost midnight, um, in a perfect world, I would miraculously do this all, sew it all the first try, and be done at 1, 1 a.m., and go to bed, and be thrilled. <laughs> um, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try to do my best, um, and then at 2 a.m., no matter where I am, I'm gonna call it, so... Here we go. Sewing the sleeve was like the same as aligning all the pieces of the side seams, but harder. I sewed pieces that I could sew straight lines on and easily make big blocks of first. And I tried to do my top stitching to flatten out the bulky fabric along the way, but it just took 
forever. I literally went through this entire spool of thread on just Crollo. This is a thousand meters. Why? So far, so good. Um, making progress. Nothing's gone horrifically yet. Um, the only real bad thing so far is that it is already 1 a.m. because it just takes forever to sew all these things and top stitch them. Um, but yeah, things are gonna start going horrifically as I do all these little like pointy triangly looking things. And by all those pointy little triangle looking things, I mean eventually I did of course have to sew all the little angled pieces too, which were just very difficult to sew. I don't think I made any mistakes with them, which was kind of lucky, but also kind of not. I have been sewing for many years, but they did require a ton of patience. I had to sew slowly, press my seams thoroughly, and make sure to clip corner pieces very, very carefully so as not to cut a hole in my garment. If you ever do a project like this, all I can say is just go really slow and don't let yourself get discouraged over how slow it's going or if you do make a mistake. This isn't exactly beginner level sewing and it can take a lot of patience, but it's totally worth it. All right. I know I said I would stop it too no matter what, but I am so close to finishing this. I think I'm just gonna go for it. I did it. And after that, of course, I had to do a bit more sewing. Like I had to actually attach the sleeves and sew in the lining. But by this point, I really hope you know what that looks like. And after that, it was just bead, 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 and bead some more, just like all around the cross until the garment was finished. I worked on my version of Crowlulu Silver for over two years. Kinda. And I am so happy to say that I did not finish him for that con in one week. <laughs> oh my God, you thought? No, I value sleeping. <laughs> I did wear a funky, mostly finished version of him that had the first half of the cross done on the back. But no, I absolutely, I did not do all that gold work <laughs> and beating. I did not get that done. <laughs> However, after two years of kind of working on him, I'm happy to say that I met my overall goal of finishing him by the end of January. Sort of. I finished him today on February 7th. That's close enough, right? <laughs> but yeah, he's done. He's done now. I'll be wearing him at Katsukon next week. And so, if you want to see the finished costume, I will see you on the con floor. <laughs>